Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ here in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, uh, March the 27th. We'll sing a few songs of the Lord's Supper, and I will have a message that I hope will be beneficial to you this evening. And so we are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. If you do not have that book, I will give you the title of the song first so that uh, you can hopefully get it and sing along with us. I hope you have one of our books. If you would first turn to number 993, the title of this song is What a Mighty God We Serve. 993, we'll sing the song through twice. What a Mighty God We Serve. <clears throat> What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. 4.74 The title of this song is, Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. 4.74 Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise Him all day long. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And before the Lord's Supper, if you would turn to number 68, 68. The title of the song is Give Thanks. <clears throat> Give thanks. 68. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ 
his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. When we observe the Lord's Supper, we ought to give thanks. We ought to give thanks exactly for what the Lord has done for us. In God's divine wisdom, he sent Jesus to us, who gave himself up that we might live, gave up his body, shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven. And with the coming of the new covenant that happened uh, when Jesus died uh, and when he was resurrected, we know that we have a better hope. Uh, we have a hope of salvation. We have a hope of forgiveness, but it comes through the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. And so as we look at the tokens here, the representations, we see the bread representing the body and the fruit of the vine representing the blood uh, so that we can remember Jesus and what he did for us in his sacrifice. Let's pray for the bread. We thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to us as part of your master plan. We're thankful that he lived as a human, that he felt everything as a human that we felt, including the pain and the abandonment of death, uh, the cruel death of the cross that he gave up his body that we might live. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember his body hanging on the cross. Help us to remember that he gave that up for each one of us. We pray this prayer in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. We just thank you, dear God, for Jesus' willingness to shed his innocent blood, uh, that uh, this sacrifice that Jesus made uh, was a perfect sacrifice. And in that, that sacrifice was made. Uh, sacrifices that were done under the old law were no longer necessary, for Jesus shed his innocent blood in his perfect sacrifice. Be with us as we partake of this fruit of the vine. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And at this time, we also think of giving back to the Lord that which we have been prospered. We pray that we would give thanks also that we are able to give, that we are able to uh, help the work of the church and its evangelistic, evangelistic efforts and its benevolence toward those that have need. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, help us uh, that we would give uh, with an open heart, give with gratitude and give with gratefulness for what we have. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that we can give. We thank you, Lord, that we want to give. Bless us and help us to plan in our giving, to indeed give as we have prospered, and indeed give back 
uh, to you that which was yours. We know that we come into this world with nothing, we leave with nothing. But uh, I believe that part of our legacy is in what we give back to you. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn your books to number 83, a very, very familiar song. We haven't sung it in a little while, so 83. I'm sure all of you know the words. Uh, the title is God is So Good. God is So Good, number 83. <clears throat> God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. He cares for me, He cares for me. So good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. singing along with us. I know the Lord enjoyed our praising him in song. And now comes the part of our evening service that's involved in a lesson uh, that I hope will be beneficial to all of us. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard the title. It has to do with the thanks, the thankfulness of thanksgiving. I'm not talking about the holiday. I'm talking about the attitude of thanksgiving. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 18, it says to be joyful always. It says pray continually. And then it says give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 tells us to be anxious in nothing but by prayer and supplication and get this with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God. The idea of thanksgiving the idea of giving thanks. Now if we read the verse again, you will notice that the verse says, give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. No matter how terrible uh, some of the circumstances in life may be, with God's help, uh, there will always be that for which we can be thankful. And uh, I know that probably some of us have had hardships come into our life. We've had our own illnesses, illnesses of our friends, of our relatives. We have had deaths that of people that we didn't think were old enough to die. Um, we have gone through a, a pandemic in which uh, close to a million people have died as a result of. And um, through all of this, God continues to tell us to be 
thankful people, that we should be thankful in all circumstances. I can't help but think of the Apostle Paul in the uh, jail in Philippi. And after having been beaten and his wounds were probably bleeding, we know that uh, in all of that, uh, he prayed, he gave thanks, and he sang praises to the Lord. He was thankful. Now, was he thankful that he didn't die? Perhaps. Was he thankful that he got whipped? Probably not. Was he thankful that he knew that no matter what his circumstance, that he knew that God was with him? We know that Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 uh, in that verse, the Apostle Paul says that he had been in uh, degrees of want, times of want, and times of plenty. And what he said was he found the ability to be content in all of those circumstances. Now, <laughs> I say this, and I use this terminology because you probably have people in your life that are thankfully challenged. I kind of like putting that term together. They're thankfully challenged. And by that, I mean, no matter what condition they're in, uh, they're never satisfied or thankful no matter what the situation is. You know, it, it's kind of easy to be thankful when things are running along smoothly. Yet some people think things are running along smoothly because of something that they have done and by their own nature. But we as, as Christians need to understand that God put this world in spin and, and he put our lives out there. And he said, you know what? You are the ones that have the choices to make. I'm not going to chase you down and bring you to me. You must come to me. It's a choice that you have to make. He said, you know, there's good and evil out there in the world. You have the choice to make as to whether you will do good or you will do evil. I did a series of devotionals coming from the first Psalm and it was entitled the, the blessed or the happy man of the first Psalm. And the, the man of the first Psalm was happy because he didn't consort with sinners. He didn't stand with them. He didn't sit with them. Right? He, he didn't stay with the scoffers, but his delight was in the law of the Lord and he meditated on the law of the Lord. I would say that this man was blessed because of how thankful he was. With that, I want to tell you a little anecdote. This is not a true story, but it's just a little story to, to kind of uh, demonstrate, I think, perhaps what thankfulness is all about. The story goes that two old friends kind of bumped into one another on the street one day. One of the friends looked forlorn. He was glum. His head was down. He was almost on the verge of tears. And his good friend said to him, What in the world? What has happened to you, my good friend? And the sad fellow said, You know, let me tell you. Three weeks, an uncle of mine passed away, and he left me $40,000. Well, the friend looked at him and said, well, you, know, you probably didn't want to lose your uncle, but $40,000, that's quite an inheritance. That's quite a bit of money. He said, but you know what? Two weeks ago, a cousin that I never even knew died. 
and he left me $85,000, and I didn't even know him. The forlorn man said, and the friend looked at him and said, well, it sounds like you've been blessed. And the forlorn man said, wait, wait, it, it, it's, that's not enough. And he was almost in tears and he cried, you'd understand. Last week, this great aunt of mine, who I didn't even know existed, passed away. And I inherited almost a quarter of a million dollars from her. By this time, the friend of the forlorn man was very confused. And he said, if you got forty dollars, eighty-five, forty thousand, eighty-five thousand, almost a quarter of a million dollars from the death of people that you barely or maybe even didn't know, why why so glum? And his pal took out his handkerchief and he blew his nose and with trembling lips muttered, this week, you know what I got? I got absolutely nothing. Hmm. The man didn't know how to be thankful. He was thankfully challenged. You know, there is a time according to the scriptures, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Philippians chapter 4, and the scriptures are dotted through our both our Old Testaments and our New Testaments about being thankful, about being thankful to our God. And how many of us maybe complain about what we don't have or how many bad things are in our lives instead of being thankful for what we do have. How many times do we stop and give thanks to God for the blessings of life? And no matter whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, don't we know that God blesses all Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45 when it says he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. So remember, just as the rain falls on the just and the unjust, the sun also shines on the just and the unjust. We should give thanks for the blessings of life. And so I'd like to just enumerate a few of the concepts and ideas behind thankfulness. First, make sure that you thank the right person. If you're going to give thanks, make sure it's directed to the one who truly blesses you. It's too bad that the idea, I think, is foreign to many. Uh, there's an old story out there about a woman who was an atheist, and I, I found it kind of interesting. This is a true anecdote. One morning, she and a friend uh, stepped out uh, uh, into the glories of nature, and it was a beautiful fall morning. And she saw the brilliant sun uh, peeking through the haze. And it burst onto a lovely meadow. And the brightly colored leaves that had changed colors were making their way lazily to the ground. She, Did I paint a, a pretty picture for you? And the, the woman, the atheist, was just filled with the beauty of the moment and burst forth. And the words that she uttered were, I am just so thankful for it all. A slight pause took place when her 
friend who was a Christian said to her, Grateful to whom, my dear? Grateful to whom? Something set that beautiful picture that she saw. The sun, the haze, the leaves, the time of year. It didn't happen by accident. Who are you thankful for? Make sure you thank the right person. Uh, in Psalms chapter, let me see, uh, 107. In Psalm 107, let's take a look at three verses in Psalm 107. If you have your Bibles, you might want to turn to it. Psalm 107, verse 15 says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for all the wonders to the sons of men. That's Psalm 107, verse 15. Let's drop down to verse 21. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and his wonders to the sons of men. And the last, down to verse 31, it says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. All of these verses let us know that we need to give thanks and giving thanks to the proper person. That personage is giving thanks to the Lord. Second, if you got some spare time, make a list of all the positive things in your life. Make a list. I'll help you with the first one. And I know this might blow your mind a little bit, but you are alive to make the list. I'm talking to you and you're alive and you are able to make the list. Three, live with an expectant attitude. Have you ever heard the, time, the term, oh, I got up on the wrong side of bed this morning. And you climb back in and you roll to the other side. You know what? We can't determine our circumstance all the time. But you can determine your attitude. Despite the fact that you can't control circumstance, you can control your attitude about those circumstances. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice. 4. Live with a grateful heart. Be grateful that uh, you are called upon by God to touch others' others' lives. Be grateful that you can witness for the Lord. Be grateful that you have the word of the God in, in which you can find the truths by which to live. Be thankful that you have the God who's given you the ability to make a difference in a child or a senior citizen uh, in, in somebody else's life. Jesus put it very succinctly in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And he said, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We don't have to know every word in our Bibles. But what we do know is that as Christians, our light is supposed to shine in both word and deed. And when we do that, we glorify our Father who is in heaven. And finally, live with a confident hope. 
if you're a believer, live your life knowing that your future is secure. Never forget, never forget that you can do all things according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, through God who strengthens you. Live with a confident hope. Aren't we glad that can, we can be with people that we care about, whether they be family, friends, church brothers and sisters, and just relish in the thought of the things that we have to be thankful for in our lives. I hope this was a positive, upbeat message. It was meant to be. Uh, in Psalm 92 and verse one, I will uh, cap the lesson off by saying what the psalmist said. And he said, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. We do serve a mighty God. And so uh, my songs this evening were, were wrapped around that. Uh, we wanted to thank the Lord and give thanks. And finally, remember that God is so good. I pray that you have come to the Lord already. But as we come to the end of this lesson, we offer the invitation to you. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your life, if you haven't heard the blessed word uh, of obedience, if you haven't confessed Jesus as the Son of God, repented of your former lives and be baptized and been baptized, uh, it is your time if you have contemplated this. If you need to respond, uh, let one of us know and we will certainly get to you. I pray that uh, all of you have been blessed through taking a little time this evening uh, to uh, sing praises to the Lord, to observe his supper, and to hear a portion of that word that uh, hopefully will uplift us all. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so blessed to have you as our God. We're so blessed to have Jesus as our brother. We just thank you for your master plan. And we're so blessed to have Jesus in our lives. Help us to reflect on him. Help us to want to have the attitude of being godly people and to live for you. And let our light so shine that people will see in both word and deed that we are believers in you and your son, and we will glorify you in that. Continue to bless us through this evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we get to come together in your name. We ask this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Be safe and may God bless you all. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory land.